on his plan to combat the Omicron variant. He is expected to double down on his stark warning last week of what this winter will look like for Americans who choose to remain unvaccinated. The spike in cases already has schools shifting back to remote learning, restaurants closing their doors to the public and Broadway closing some shows, and people are forced to wait in block-long lines for a COVID test. Right now we're bringing in Dr. Jeanette Neshawa. She's Fox News medical contributor and family and emergency medicine physician. We're going to get to those uh, long lines in a moment, Dr. Jeanette, but I want to start by setting the tone, acknowledging that those listening, those people who cannot get vaccinated due to compromised health, religion, age, and other valid reasons for not getting the jabs, but to those who won't get vaccinated because they believe disinformation or subscribe to conspiracy theories, from a public health perspective, Dr. Jeanette, how do you convey the importance of the vaccines to that group? Well, I would just remind everyone that everyone that is most everyone that is passing away in the past six months, we've had over 160,000 deaths and they have been largely in part in those populations who are unvaccinated. So that's really important. And I would also want to remind everyone that the vaccines, they work they're safe. Majority of my patients testing positive have not had the booster. And even if they've had two shots, Arthel, their symptoms are very mild. And some of them have no symptoms at all and just came in for testing because they have to travel or they just want to take that extra precaution. So the vaccines work. It's what's going to keep you out of the hospital and it's what's going to prevent severe complications and death for most of us. So President Biden will address the nation on Tuesday, and you can almost bet that he's going to plead with Americans who haven't already done so to get vaccinated. Uh, the president is also going to lay out his winter plan in the midst of this very aggressive variant and this persistent pandemic. So if President Biden says testing is crucial in curbing the spread of Omicron and future variants, how can the administration best help Americans who are not of means, who don't have access to medical care and can't afford to buy masks and test kits? I mean, where should those supplies be made available? Yeah, and that's a great question. One of the biggest issues that we're dealing with right now is testing. And we're two years into this pandemic. And part of Biden's plan is to have military medical teams deployed, like we see in Michigan right now. They're undergoing a crisis. Also, to have millions and millions of masks issued throughout the country. And then they're going to uh, give out a half a million, 500,000 home tests. That's fantastic, Arthel, but it's nowhere near enough. And I'm actually quite disappointed. We have over 300 million Americans in this country, and 500,000 isn't really going to do much. Of course, anything is better than nothing, but being this far along, we need to have more testing available, and, and, and it should be free, and it should be easy access. We shouldn't have people waiting hours and hours to get tested. So that's something that we need to ramp up right now, not in two weeks or three weeks, because right now is where we're seeing the spikes and the surges in places like Rhode Island and Michigan and Minnesota and here in New York City. Mm -hmm. And given the closures and the shifting to remote, remote learning that we're already seeing, I mean, how should balance factor in for the sake of yeah. public health, both medical and mental? It's important to understand that Omicron is different because it's so much more contagious. It has an r not value estimated about eight. What does that mean? That it means one infected person can spread to up to eight or nine other people. So knowing that information, it's important that we all understand whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, we're all at risk of picking it up. It's just a matter of who's gonna have severe complications, who's gonna have no symptoms at all. So we can all celebrate the holidays safely. Um, and if you haven't had a chance to get a booster, at least go and get tested, wear your mask in public, take those common sense measures to protect one another, to protect yourself. Um, we've made it through Delta. We've made it through the UK variant. We've right. made it through right. the Alpha variant. What, We're going to make it what, through this What I'm asking, well. Dr. Jeanette, right. What I'm yeah. asking, excuse me, is that you're starting to see some of these closures. All right. And so what I'm asking yeah. you is when the administration and the medical experts are making these decisions, how much should balance factor in, not just in, well, in terms of medical health, but also people's mental health? Sure. That, that's a good question. But, Arthel, it's the university that's closing down, not the White House instructing them to close down. It's the, the Broadway shows when their full cast has come into contact with COVID and they're sick and exposed. 
they are shutting down. But school closures, universities, sports shut down. Yes, we do have to find that balance of not damaging the economy, but also keeping into account mental anxiety and depression. But we have to make sure that you're not sick if you're going out into, into the public. If you've been exposed, if you have symptoms, you have to stay home. So we just do the best we can with the resources we have, wear your mask, get tested, only, you know, close down, a, for example, a Broadway show or cancel a game if all the members or all the cast members or the players are sick and you just don't have enough people to participate. But other than that, mm -hmm. we shouldn't have shutdowns and lockdowns. We need to just do what we can to protect ourselves, which includes masks, vaccines, and testing, and move on with our lives. We can't continue shutdowns unless we see in your specific community right. that your hospital is overwhelmed, where you can't have patients come in for heart attacks and, and strokes and car accidents and basic things like appendicitis. That's when we need to you know, take a look, take a step back, and, and then take a look and see what we need to do to prevent those uh, the, the overburdening and the overwhelming of the hospitals. The goal is not to have zero cases. The goal is to make sure we don't overwhelm the hospital. So we have to find that balance in between. Okay, I, I just I want a, a quick answer to this because this yeah. is on a lot of people's mind. What do you say to those of us who are fully vaccinated, boosted, wear masks, follow the protocol, and are quite frankly frustrated that we can't get past this pandemic? I say I understand your frustration. We, we're all feeling the same way, but don't let your guard down. Don't give up. This may be it. Omicron may be the last major variant we deal with. We may come to find that, yeah, it's more contagious, but not more severe. And if we just get your routine uh, vaccines, do the best you can. Know that if you are vaccinated, you're going to most likely be okay. And then just move on from there. We can't predict the future, but I do think we're at a point now where we have all the tools and resources to get passed through this. Dr. Jeanette Neshawat, thank you very much uh, for your expert uh, advice and for joining us here.